Hi everybody, this is Diane. It is time to start on the next pair of journals. I'll be doing some gardening journals because it is that time of year. We're in the middle of June now. And so I have these two books that I thought would be wonderful for gardening journals. I'm going to do them a little differently from what I normally do. Um, I'm not even sure if I want to use my bind it all or to make a spine and sew them in. I'll have to decide that today because I'm going to cut the pages today. But I'm using this book, John Bradshaw's Complete Guide to Better Gardening, all about annuals. I love the cover on that. I've had this for a while and I was probably going to make a smash book or glue book out of it because I, I like to do that with this larger books. This isn't huge. It is seven inches by just over 10, about 10 and a quarter. And I thought it was really pretty and would make a great gardening journal. I saved many of the pages that I can use and I can use uh, make ephemera out of some of those elements. And this book is a little smaller. This one is nine and a qu oh, six and a quarter, sorry, six and a quarter wide by a little over nine and a half high. And it's got a mother and a tiny little girl working in their flower garden. So these are both featuring flowers on the cover, but I wanted to make a journal that made, that included both flower and vegetable gardening. So we'll, we will include that and I'll show you some of the pieces that I have. I also have a lot of pages from that, this original book. I have a feeling that I will do a spine journal, put a spine on it and sew pages into it because I can include more because I have a lot of stuff. So let's take a look at what I have. I recently got this at the flea market. It's a nasturtium stamp and it's a nice big one. And this is an old one from um, Personal Stamp Exchange from 1997. Um, this one I just got in a bunch of jewelry a couple weeks ago or a week ago even. It's a watering can. I think I may have two pins that would be good for gardening. So hopefully we'll come across the other one as we go through. I don't know the name of the Etsy shop that I got these from. I'll look it up and put it in the description. But I, from the same shop, I got two kits. One has flower garden gardening and one has vegetable gardening. And I didn't print everything. I wanted one flower and one vegetable page in each signature in each journal. So I just did a few of the pages and there are pages to print on the backs also, which is nice. Some lined pages. There is quite a bit of ephemera in these in these packs, um, digital sets, but I only printed a few pages of ephemera and I'll show you why I did that because I have plenty of stuff to make ephemera. I don't need digital ephemera. And again, these are printed on the back so you can write. Really fun, beautiful pages, right? Uh, I wanted, let's see, I was just going to print this because I absolutely love these. That would be, be great embellishments. All of this would be great embellishments. So I thought I would add to the vintage stuff that I have and use those. But then I absolutely love these tags. So they will be available if I need them. And I would only have three for each journal. So I thought if I had the vegetable tags, I should get some tags for floral too. So there's two really tall ones and I love the labels. This has labels too, doesn't it? Yeah, these round labels. And this one has two labels and two cards. So again, there would be three of these cards or tags for each journal. I have a couple of, besides this stamp, I have this set from Tim Holtz. Don't know if I'll use it, but I have it. And then this is from Sam Poole. 
and it might be more of a field notes type of stamp set, but I might be able to use it. It has definition for botanical and see observations, but grow, that would be good, and notes and seeds, I could use those words. So what I thought I would do, I said it might it would be a little different from other journals that I make. I think instead of including scrapbook paper, I'm just going to have a lot of graph paper or lined paper so you can actually use it to plan your journal and write down uh, when things were planted, the dates that things were planted and, and when you see them sprouting or blooming or, you know, like make note of when it rains, you know, just all kinds of notes that a gardener might want. So I have an assortment of graph paper. This one is a strange design graph and this one has the dot grid. These came out of a composition book, so it's a folio, so that would be good for these large books. <clears throat> and then I have my colored graph paper. Some vintage graph paper. And this large tablet, I think this is all vellum graph paper. Yeah, it is. It's the same as this. So I'll use some of that. I've had this for quite a while and it's running low now. So I thought we would have a lot of the graph paper, paper to write on, and a, a couple of the digital pages in each signature and some of the book pages. And I think that probably as we go through here we'll find more things that could be pages. I also have these days of the week pages with roses and um, peony, I think. Is that a peony or a rose? It might be a rose. Spaces to write on that. So let's go through this. This is the fun stuff right here. I did go through this a couple weeks ago and kind of organized it. I needed to see what I had. Oh, here's the other pin. Good. I have one for each journal. So it's a little cart and a spade and some flowers, a packet of seeds. All right. I have this cut from a vintage magazine. I love that. There's only one of those right here. Little lined note paper. I had gotten a, a vintage seed book, and this was on the cover, the inside cover. And then I got, a, I have a whole bunch of little things that were cut out of that that are not quite that sturdy, because they were cut from the pages. And I saved some things that were cut from botanical books. This came out of a magazine. Just some images of seed packets another magazine image. So I've got lots of magazine and then book images from a botanical book. I have a few words from a Mrs. Cog set, gardening yard work. This came from a children's book. So this is um, one of the things that I cut from that old seed book. It, it did have flower seed and vegetable seeds. So I just cut out a lot of words that I can use to make embellishments or just glue to a page. And a few of the black and white images. This came off the cover. And some vintage book images. There's a little garden gnome. He's cute. I was at my sister's house and I picked this up out of her yard. I'll just wipe it off and maybe I can use it. Some more. This is from a modern magazine. Images of seed packets. Children's book. I'll put those in a separate pile. I want to put all these words in a separate pile. I should have done that while I had them out. 
supposed to be sorting while I talk. They are pretty much sorted, but <clears throat> I think they might have gotten a little bit mixed up when I put them back. We're finally getting some rain today. It's been so dry here. Mother Breeze. It's from a children's book. So black and white images in that seed book. They could be pretty cool as ephemera. So I got quite a lot out of that book. It's from a vintage magazine. So I have a lot of ads from vintage magazines that pertain to gardening. That's from a more modern magazine. I love this image of the peas. And a children's book. Botanical book. See, I don't... This is why I didn't need to print ephemera more vintage magazines. This came, I think, with a gardening book that I got at the flea market, How to Make and Maintain a Fine Lawn. And I happen to have two of them, so each journal can have one. This is a an applique of a watering can with some flowers. I have a stack of photographs from my flower garden. I don't have a flower garden anymore, but in the house where I raised my children, I eventually, I didn't want to have to deal with flowers and stuff. I didn't care about that stuff, but I started with, I started with some hosta in the front of the house, and then I added a couple of things, and after a few years, I had a big perennial garden in my backyard and all kinds of stuff. So these photos were all taken from my, that's my dogwood, these were all taken from my garden, so I thought I will include a few of these photos in your, in the journals here that I'm making. And I'll keep some. I need to keep some, you know. And there's a little vintage card, like a children's card with a tomato on it. Just a couple modern postcards. This came from a a little box that I got at the flea market several years ago with sort of like um, life hacks. They didn't call it that back then, but for different areas in your domestic life. And these are about the garden. I got some note cards. I think I got these in a happy mail. There's a daffodil and some more daffodils. Some pansies. That's a bridge tally. And irises. I love irises. I love all of these. Daffodils, pansies, and irises. They are all on my large list of favorites. <laughs> it's too hard to narrow it down. I have these large cards that have vegetables. I think I got this in a Happy Mail, too. These are beautiful images. And they're large books, so these will be great in that. I have seed packets. I have more seed packets too that aren't in here. But these are vintage labels, French labels from seed packets. Flower, I think flower, I don't think I have any vegetable ones left. So I can use those. And then these are real packets of seeds. I don't know that they would grow. I think I got these in a Happy Mail, so I have no way of knowing how old they are. I don't remember, but I think I'd, it was either in a Happy Mail or a box of stuff that I picked up. Because I know I didn't just pick these out and buy them. They came with other stuff. But these are great. I like those um, white ones. And then, I'm sure this was a Happy Mail gift. Let me show you what my other seed packets are. have to sort through these and figure out which things I can use out of this because I ordered from Etsy or eBay flower seed packets 
and vegetable seed packets. So I have to go through these and I'll probably try start this tonight. Some of them have more than others. The watermelon and tomato don't have many in them. And then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to put these in my shop, how many of each will go in my shop, and um, then I'll know what I have left to work with. But some of these are definitely going to go in these journals. I just think seed packets are so beautiful. It's art. It's real art. I have some stickers that I believe came from my niece-in-law. So some K and Company. These are epoxy stickers and these are dimensionals. They all look like zinnias. Different flowers here. Nice. Nice for a flower or a garden journal. I have some napkins, just a couple of these with the vegetables. And then I got these in a happy mail. These are unusual napkins, a tomato and corn on the cob. And some more, I think I got these in a happy mail. I'm pretty sure I did. Yes, because I didn't buy these. Uh, vegetable and flower seed packets. So maybe I don't need to keep any of those other ones. I will keep them because I want to use them in other kinds of journals, not just gardening journals. Good, I have some more of those. These are some strips that are left over from Graphic 45 paper. And that's a different scrapbook paper. And this, this is large. So it will have to go in the large book if, if it will even fit in there. I got this at the flea market last year. And it's some kind of a wheel chart thing for vegetable gardens. But I held it up to this, and I think the only way I can use it is to paper clip it to the page, if I can even do that. It might even hang off a little bit once the papers are cut down to go in there, because I, I make them smaller to fit inside the journal. And these came from a book, I think a Reader's Digest gardening book, Seasonal Jobs. This is from a magazine. Got some cucumbers and nasturtium and tomato. Vegetables. Some children's books about gardening. Gardening Notebook. That's where this came from. The Old Farmer's Almanac Gardening Notebook. I think I just got these from Sarah. And probably these pages too. I know she gave me some gardening stuff. And I don't know if she gave me these or if I had these from... These came out of one of these books. So I may have just had those myself. This came out of a Jack and Jill book for magazine for kids. We have some flowers and some vegetables. This is really cool and I only have one, I think. Oh, I have two vintage seed things, so I, that's good. This is from Burpee Company, Order for Vegetable Seeds, and I don't see a date written on it. Yeah, I don't see a date. But it's really cool. And this is Cotter & Company, rare, Warehouse Shipment Order Form. Um... Oh, no date here either. Oh, um, 1992. So I think this is older. But they're both cool. Here is that seed book that I cut all those words and pictures out of. I just saved this thinking I might need it for background for ephemera. It's uh, like the index of seeds. And this is from a magazine with some gardening tools. Martha Stewart Living Magazine. So it's got some quotes. I'll probably cut these out and use them. Clear moon, frost soon. Halo around the moon, rain soon. 
No Killing Frost will arrive after the Martin comes to stay. So these are lore and legends that have to do with planting and gardening, which I thought would be really fun. Of course, I have some of these from the binder, the gardening binder. So it, I think it's all flowers. Yep. Another piece of Graphic 45 and a magazine page. This one's vintage. It's really cool. I love the color coloration on that. It just looks vintage. More kids' books, book pages. Some more botanical book pages. It's a modern looking daffodil art. And this, what's in season? This is from a, like a local book you would pick up if you were visiting an area. I think it was one of those. I don't know what the area is. And I don't, I don't know if somebody gave it to me or what. And I have one calendar page of a lady with her gardening tools all around her. I don't know what she's accomplished because there's an empty pot. Oh, maybe she took a, this out of the pot and planted it. That one little flower. And she looks very proud of herself. Oh, and this came out of a vintage magazine. So, that's what I have to work with. So now you see why I didn't have to print any ephemera. And now I'm going to, not on video probably, I'm going to start cutting pages. I think with all of this stuff here, and I will want to include these as pages. Might be too big for this one. I might have to, might be able to trim it down to fit. And it would be in the book like this. It's probably maybe a tad wide for that, but I don't know. So I'm going to start, I'm going to shut off the camera and start cutting pages. So I feel like I accomplished something. I've had a very frustrating day today. I started out good going to the flea market and I wasn't there long because it started to rain, but I was there long enough to bring home some great things. And you probably saw them yesterday. And the rest of the day has been downhill. It's like everything I try to do doesn't work because it has to do with technology. Phone calls that I had to make were very, very frustrating. And anything I tried to do was frustrating. And now I just need to do something creative. So I'm going to cut my pages. Thanks for watching. What do you think about these? this journal project that I'm doing? I think it'll be fun. I do not plan to make gardening journals every year. I don't garden anymore. And so I'm not interested in making gardening journals every year. But I did want to do, I wanted to use these book covers and make some gardening journals this year. So I'm, I'm telling you that so that you know when I'm done, I'm going to be selling the leftover stuff. So you can watch for the journals and watch for the leftovers in a bundle. And hopefully watch some of the process along the way of making these. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're having a creative day. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.